Okay, batten down the hatches, grab a cup of coffee, um, hunker in, because this is a biggie. This is where we're going to talk about the bulk of how we're going to take these radio collar points and um, turn them into calculated core and general home ranges in ArcGIS Pro. Okay, here's what a map of our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven coyote points look like. Again, subset of a massive, massive coyote radio collar data set. Uh, this is down in the Dugway Proving Grounds, Southern Utah. Gorgeous. Okay, a couple of different methods for calculating home ranges. The tried and true traditional method is called a minimum convex polygon. In ARC, it's called an MBG, minimum bounding geometry. Same deal. Basically, it's a polygon that's created by connecting the outermost points together. It's called a convex hull because the edges are convex and it's a shell that goes around the outside of the points. Um, it is very useful for delineating the overall area used, but it assumes the animals are using the whole area equally, and we know that that's not true. Um, it is a widely used method, and if you're trying to repeat someone else's analysis or build on existing uh, research that's been done, you probably will still be running um, minimum convex polygons, MB MBGs, um, to compare home ranges. But we can do better than this. We can get um, more precise understanding of how animals are using a landscape. Here's um, the minimum bounding geometry calculated in ArcGIS Pro using convex hull, uh, one polygon for each one of our animals. So you can specify, because our animals have a unique ID field, um, we can tell ARC to calculate it for each animal or for the population as a whole. All right, the other um, method that we've talked about is called KDE, Kernel Density Estimates. Estimates. It's a density surface. It takes point locations and smooths, predicts a likelihood of occurrence, um, and can extend even beyond the points. It depends on the software that you're using. Um, but because it's a kernel, that, that three-dimensional shape around each point, you would expect that if the coyote was pinged here, or the animal was pinged here, that it, there's a probability that it's using this larger area. That's the kernel, right? Um, the way that ARC runs kernel density, uh, the surface is limited to the point's extents. It will create a raster, but it cuts it off at the minimum and or you know the minimum and maximum extents of the data. It'll be cropped here. That's one of the limitations of running it in, in ARC, but that's okay. Um, it's going to show areas of higher and lower densities of points, useful for defining core and edge or general habitats, which is what we're going to do. Um, and it does make a similar assumption of whole area use. Um, but you'll see in part four that we're going to calculate a ratio called use versus availability, where we bring in land cover and we actually look at what's available to the coyote within this area. And I keep saying coyote because that's what our exercise is about. But the animal that we're uh, mapping here, we're going to look at the land cover types that are available within the core or general home range versus where the animal is actually found to see if we can determine that it's preferentially using one kind of land cover type over another. But the, the home range that's calculated has one value for each one of these isopleth areas, um, a core, and then at the outside here, a more general home range area. And we're gonna calculate those um, using quantiles that we're gonna pull from the density values. Okay, uh, right. So here's a brief walkthrough of what we're gonna do. <laughs> Here are your points, your, your radio collar locations. We're gonna run the KDE tool and get a new raster surface from that. And each one of the cells in this raster has a density estimate, okay? The, the, the estimated density of points within some neighborhood around each cell. We're gonna use a tool called extract value to points to copy the density values at each point's location into the points attribute table. Then we're going to use those points, uh, this new point table that we get out, to calculate the quantiles of the 50% 
the densest areas, and a 95% quantile area that's going to define the general range. But to do that, we need to extract the density values to the points, manipulate the attribute table a little bit, and then calculate um, these binary rasters, basically uh, reclassifying on density values greater than um, the 50% quantile and the 95% quantile. All right, so how does extract value to points work? You've got a point data set. We overlay a raster, in this case our density, our KDE, um, but this is an awesome tool to use on any kind of points with any kind of raster. Uh, you can extract the raster value to the points. Okay, uh, you're going to drill down at each point location and output a new point file. It's going to be the exact same looking thing, but the attribute table is bigger. The attribute table is going to have a raster value. Guess what the raster value is? For each point's location, it's that density, calculated density estimate value. Okay. From there, we're going to create isopleth lines um, that represent the probability surface. An isopleth represents the boundary lines that contain a specified volume of a surface. Remember, we're dealing with the density surface here. So the 95% isopleth represents the line containing 95% of the volume of the surface. And these are called quantiles. So what we're going to do is calculate 50% of the surface volume to get the core range. And we're going to calculate the density value of the 95th point feature to get 95% of the surface volume. And from those, we're going to calculate the core and general home ranges. So how do we determine the quantiles? Um, this is the attribute table from just one animal's um, set of points after running the KDE wow. Uh, tool in ArcMap. So we're going to sort the raster value field. Note that there's 122 records for this animal and we're going to, um, we've already run um, the extract value to points tool. So we're looking at a point attribute table, vector data, but we've got our density value here. So 122 records, we want to sort this raster value field descending and it doesn't really matter which order you do this in as long as you understand the process. So I would recommend sorting it descending until you understand what's going on. Hang on, my dog's going nuts. Okay, so um, sort the raster value descending, and then you're going to multiply the total number of points by 0.5 to get the 50%, the 50th point, and 0.95 to get the number of records um, that would be um, in 95% of the area. So if we multiply uh, 122 by 0.5, you get 61. And so what we'd want to do here is select or go down to the 61st record and pull that density value. That's the value that you're going to use to map 50% of the density surface. And then if we multiply 122 by 0.95, we get 116. So we're going to scroll down and select the first 116 records, go across from the 116th record, and pull that density value. That's what I mean by sorting ascending or descending. You can do it the opposite way, but then you would multiply to get your general range. If you sorted ascending, you'd only want to multiply 122 by 0.05 and then just pull that smaller amount. Um, because we're trying, well, I'll show you what we're trying to do here. <laughs> okay, like I said, hunker down, people. Okay, so um, this is the value. So whatever this was, record the values at the 50th and the 95th percent. So we want 50% of the points and 95% of the points, but it's the value here that we're looking for. So you're going to um, use those calculated values to pull that number of points and then get that density surface value. These are the numbers that you need to write down are in the raster value field. Okay, then we need to do some reclassifying. We want basically two different classes, but you'll end up with three because you need all the rest. So uh, not binary, but trinary. 
Um, we're going to have, um, well, let's see if I've got an example here. Um, in arc map, you'd say two classes and then put your break values in here. But in ArcGIS Pro, it's the new window that has the, um, the rows in it. But it's the same thing. You're going to put the break values in, type them in manually. Um, your 50% and your point, your 95% density values um, are the break values for your um, classes here. So the question is, which one, which class is going to represent your core range? Like, let's just say here, all I'm worried about is calculating the core. So I made these two classes. Would the core range be the 0 to 8 values for density, or would they be the 8 to 32? The answer is the higher one. It's the higher densities are going to be the core uh, range areas. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's walk through that again really quick. Coyote locations, run the kernel density. Here's your density output with a range of values that isn't going to match this, um, but should be 0 to some high value that equals um, the predicted number of coyotes within, um, let's see, let's go back to here, within square map units, so a certain number of square meters of your cell. Okay, then we're going to run extract values to points. Input point features, we're going back to the original coyote locations. Our input raster is the kernel density surface, and you're going to get an output set of points that looks the same but has a bigger attribute table. Make sure you put that um, new name in here. Then you're going to get, like I said, the new point file. So this is the KD, the kernel density version of the extracted values, or the extracted values kernel density of our coyote points. Um, and now you can see that we've got the point, uh, point data here and our raster value field. Here we're displaying the points over the kernel density. Uh, we're going to determine the quantile values. So look at the total number of coyotes in the data set, or not coyotes, but coyote points in the data set. Sort the raster value field descending multiply this number by 0.5 and 0.95. In this case, we need the 492nd record and the 935th record. We're going to um, select that number. Um, you can do that here. And then look across, record the density values at these two records so that we're going to reclassify. Here you need three classes. I thought I, I thought it was three. Um, two if we were just looking at um, only calculating the core. So you need three, one for the general, one for the core, and one for everything else. So we've, we've written down our break values. We've put them in here, break, break, and then the max. So my question again is, which one of these is going to be no data? Which one of these is going to be the core range? And which one is going to be the general range? Hopefully it makes sense to you that the highest density values are the core range. And we're calling it 50 to represent um, the top 50 uh, density values. And then this is the 95th quantile. Core and general. The 95 is your general, lower values, and then no density up to, this is the 0.05 or the the 5% least dense areas. We're just going to make that no data. Um, in ArcGIS Pro, it's all caps, no spaces, no data. And here's how it looks. Um, the core range in green, the general range in purple, overlaid on the original KDE surface. Okay, from that, we can calculate the area of the home ranges two ways. One, convert rasters to polygon and then run calculate geometry on the area. Two, what do we know about raster attribute tables? They give you a value and a count. So we should have a 50% or a, a bunch of cells that are 50. So value and count, we'd have a bunch that are 50 and a bunch that are 95 for value. 
and then we're going to get a count of each one. If we know the resolution, or the size of one cell, we can multiply the cell's area by the count of the core and get the area that is core or general. So either way. Let's complicate things a little bit if you can handle that. Um, that was how to create a general and core range for the entire population. But what if we want to calculate um, a home range for each individual animal? They clearly have individual home ranges. We've got a couple um, stray points here, but for the general, um, our general purposes, they've each got a very defined area. Turns out that KDE and ARC doesn't allow you to use a unique identifier um, like the minimum uh, bounding geometry tool did. For kernel density, we need to loop a script. Now, the good news is uh, Chris Gerard and Tyler Hatch have written a beautiful script to loop this for you. Your only job is to understand the very basics of how this thing is going to run so that you can plug in your data and name the outputs and know where they're going to go on your computer so you can find them later. Now, the instructions walk through this really beautiful script, step by step, explaining what each line means. I'd highly recommend that you take the time to read through that because you really need to understand how these paths work and which elements of the script you need to control. Um, this is an example. This is not the script you're going to be using. But I just want you to know that you're going to have an input. You need to be able to copy the path to your Coyote radio collar points that includes the kernel density extracted values. <laughs> you need to be able to put the path into the script. And then you need to be able to identify which parts of the script are creating outputs um, and where this is going to go on your computer so you can find these. Trust me, it's awesome and uh, incredibly powerful. You are absolutely welcome to sit there and run the KDE on each individual set of points if you want to, but don't use the power of GIS and ArcPy. Um, and that's my dog having a sneezing fit. So I want you in this exercise to calculate three different home ranges for each coyote. You're gonna calculate the minimum bounding geometry, and then you're gonna calculate a home or like a core and a general home range for each coyote. All right, you're gonna create a figure to demonstrate the three different outputs and enough supporting evidence to convince us that you understand this whole process and that you were able to self-evaluate your results. And if you have any questions, let me know.